Hello and welcome everybody to today's webinar. What's new in VAPS, VPS and VJS for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. My name is Martin. I'm CEO and one of the owners of Netronic Software. And as always, when we do webinars for Business Central, I'm your host for this webinar. Um, I initially thought I would welcome you today with a Dreimal kräftig Oche Alav, which is a German saying that people in the region where we are located use starting from today because we have started the carnival season. So there's a lot of festivities going on. Um, I decided to play safe today and not get out costumed, drink alcohol, but stay in the office and deliver an exciting webinar or a webinar that excites me. On the one hand, I'm sad that it took me now six weeks of the year to deliver the first webinar. But the reason for this webinar is quite exciting because we end of January release new versions of the VAPS, uh, VPS and VJS. Before we start, um, a couple of typical housekeeping things that you all know from a webinar. Yes, the webinar will be recorded. Um, we will make sure that we have the recording available on our YouTube channel, most likely late today or early tomorrow morning. Um, then we will also embed this on the website, maybe beginning of next week, mid of next week, because the, the colleague who does this has a couple of days off to celebrate Carnival, but uh, you should find the recording on the YouTube channel tonight, maybe tomorrow. And then also we will send you an email next week with a link to the recording. If you have any question, then um, please use the uh, go to webinar chat pane. Um, if the questions are related to Business Central and our products, I will answer them in the webinar. Anything else, most likely we'll take this offline. Um, when I'm doing demos, I might not see that you asked the question. So then don't think that I ignored the question, but I'm just when I'm in the demo, I, I don't have the go to webinar. Uh, chat box uh, or, or, or chat box open, so then I don't see them. But then I will revert back after each demo to PowerPoint. And when I'm in PowerPoint, I see your question. So please feel free to ask um, as many questions as you like. And I promise I will answer them, all of them. So that should it be with respect to housekeeping um, and everything else. It's regular standard webinar. For those of us who have never joined us for a webinar, we typically try to categorize them a little bit so that you also know what to expect in this webinar. And we always differentiate by how familiar is someone joining this webinar with our products. So we have beginner webinars and more and more advanced webinars. And then we also look at what is the focus of the webinar. Are we focusing on features and functions and belts and whistles of the product or are we looking at business processes and best practices of either how to use our product or how to achieve certain things when you work with Business Central and maybe our products? So, um, of course, we have introductory webinar. This is not what I do today. When it comes to feature and function, then we have the what's new in or functional deep dive webinars. And here are how to webinars, what I do today is a what's new in webinar. So it, it is not about business processes and best practices, but it is about features and functions. And it's especially about those features and functions that are new with the releases that we provide at end of January. And it's also more advanced stuff because I assume that you know our products and can put what you see into relation of to your knowledge of our product. So I will not start with introducing our product, explaining our product, but I, I assume that you know the products, that you can follow it and that you can assess, okay, now knowing what Netronic used to have, this is new and this is how it, uh, it, uh, it plays in that overall game. So this is more in like advanced thing and more feature function and not best practices that you can apply to your manufacturing sites or that you can bring to your customers. Having said this, it is always the slide that um, is uh, becomes challenging to do because I have to use small fonts, um, but this is always a delight to do. Um, 
And it shows that with our products, we are in a really continuous enhancement uh, um, process. And this means also, if you're a customer, if you're investing into a product that is constantly enhanced, then this should tell you that your investment are in safe hands. And if you're a partner, then this also should tell you that we are not a bluebird. We are not somebody who, who shows up one year, whatever, at directions or whatever, and then show you some fancy stuff. And the next year we are gone, but we really consistently and reliably deliver um, on enhancing the products. We are committed to them and we build them as we go. Um, so we are in general um, in a process of doing um, one release per quarter. Um, so if you look carefully, then you see, okay, there was one in September, which is Q3, and now we have one in January. So yes, with what we released in January, we faced a little bit of delay. Um, so we were done or almost done with the development end of last year, but then uh, for Christmas reasons and for um, uh, the, our will to take sufficient time to test, we um, allow the developers to slip the release into uh, January. So what we see right now, the January release was meant to be the Q4 release. So there will be another release in March. Um, and I will talk about this in uh, at the end of the webinar. So with VPS and VJS, we are in version 21. With VAPS, we are in version 16. And we always try to kind of uh, update all our products at the same point of time. Every version that we shipped since version 1 um, always includes bug fixes. Um, we will always do some internal stuff, some housekeeping, but also like always work on performance and stability. Every new version includes new features and functions. And from time to time, if required, we also provide new events and objects because VPS, VJS, and VAPS have an own API so that partners or customers can extend them. This time, no new events, new object chip, but we focused on uh, the first three points. And then whenever we launch a product, actually, before we give it to you, we give it to Microsoft and reapply for the App Source recertification. So, so we put it again in the App Source process. And once it is, once the new version is available on App Source, then we send out, we, we put them on the partner portal, we put them, uh, the release notes on the website, and we inform everybody the new version is there um, so that, that that we like consistently or we launch the date for a launch is actually date when the versions are on app source. Um, as I said, we, we, we have been on a, on a cycle to release one new version per quarter. We will change this this year for VPS and VJS. So with VPS and VJS as they are pretty mature products and also they are, they are approaching um, a state where we see them as a product never is feature complete, but they are more feature complete than the VAPS. So we will take them as you already observed it last year, a little bit slower. So we will provide um, a new version um, after every release or, or new of new release to Business Central. So to make sure that they work with the most recent Business Central version, and then we add a couple of things. So we will switch to an a, um, half yearly release cycle for VPS and VJS but we will continue with quarterly releases of the VAPS. And then I always tell this in this webinar, and I hope I'm also telling this enough when I meet you as partners or when I work with you as customers directly or when, when my, my colleagues work with you guys, your ideas are more than welcome. So again, a lot of the functionality that we shipped, especially in VAPS and VPS now, were ideas that we had either directly from working with you or indirectly working from you. So we saw, we, we listened to you, you asked some questions, and then from these questions, some ideas were triggered, and we said, okay, now, okay, let's build this. Um, last but not least, um, on the release, on how we release and what we release, we follow Microsoft's modern lifecycle. Also, this is no, no news. This is old news, but we continue to repeat this. So when we, when we develop new functions, we support the latest Business Central version, and we do our best if Microsoft has not done too many breaking changes to support the last two. This has been like, we always put this in bracket, but since 
we started to apply this. This always worked. So like the rule of thumb is the Netronic product. They are always the new features developed for the latest business central version and the, the previous two are supported. Um, so that if you are if you're running business center on premises and now are not on BC, whatever the most current version is, then um, then uh, I think it's whatever it's 23. So then um, uh, then if you are on 21, then the the new function also are available for an on premise update and you can talk to your partner or you can talk to me to get the runtime package so that you can install it locally. So when we release, we have it always available on app source and then also for on-premise installation. And with this, um, just a, uh, um, let's look at the releases. And, and if you want to look at that later again, then just so that you know, on our website, um, we have the release notes. I also started to share those links and I tried to start to share those links in the training sessions that we run because from there you can really follow the release, uh, the release cadence and what has been in there. So in the business central area of the website, there is a support area and from the support area, you can um, access the release notes or when we share those uh, slides after the webinar, then you can take the links from here or you take a screenshot. Um, so now let's look at the January release and yes, the support version 23, 22 and 21. I think we also have um, we have runtime packages available on demand for customers who are on version 20. I'm not 100% sure. So if you are running BC on prem and are on version 20 on version 20, and if you like what you see today, then reach out to your partner and or reach out to one of my colleagues or reach out to me directly so that we can figure out if we can help you or not. So looking at what we shipped is with the VJS. We did um, we we did a lot of bug fixing still, and we uh, shipped a version with uh, uh, pretty much focus on performance improvement. And we uh, faced uh, situations for, with some customers who really have a lot of resources and who have employees who are set up as resources. And there we found some areas how we can significantly improve the performance, especially if you have a lot of resources, so that uh, things will go faster for you guys. Then um, I will continue with the VAPS. Um, with the VAPS, we also looked at performance improvement potential and we found some, especially when loading and scheduling. So also there, the product has become smoother um, and, and has become faster. So that's always nice to see. And then from a feature point of view, other than Looking at the performance improvements, which was actually a big thing and it, it required a lot of internal rework. We have, I would say, a minor major feature that we shipped and a major feature that we shipped. So the minor major feature, and I say this a little bit jokingly, is we actually now in Business Central have a VAPS role center page. And right now, this is mainly for the sake of making data sanity checks. And this is mainly a role center that will help us work with you guys, especially if we um, are in the, in the early phases of implementing and introducing the VAPS, then we have recognized that there can be interesting data constellations in Business Central. And some of these interesting data constellations uh, still lead to unwanted results in the VAPS or they still lead to, uh, to crashes. And when we have these really interesting data constellations, then this always comes with a lot of head scratching for you, for the partner, for us, for the developers. And it comes sometimes with a really lot of detective type of work to figure out which single production order or which single capacity entry or whatever created this and now we started to build a role center page that help us finding like data issues earlier especially when implementing the VAPS so that the implementation then can go faster because we can do data sanity checks better and make sure that your data is clean enough to work with the VAPS and then we have a feature that now allows us to move 
multiple operations in one go. So in the past, as you know, you could drag and drop one or we could uh, schedule uh, entire production orders. Now we can also select multiple, production, uh, multiple operations and then move them in one go. And with this, um, let's have a look. So let's go into the first demo of the product. And um, as always, I will jump back and forth. I think I don't need this page. I refresh this. And let's log in. You see, I have my road center here. I'm the production planner. I have the VAPS installed. Um, if you work with the VAPS, you typically create a simulation, um, which means you copy production orders that meet certain criteria into a separate table. Then you schedule, make all your scheduling, all your changes on this copied data, and then you publish the simulation, which means you write the data back into the business center production orders. So I'm now creating the simulation. I say I want to I want a plan or a schedule on the firm plant and release production orders. I want to look five days back, three months into the future. So please give me all the production order that meet this criteria. And I am applying no filters. I say show all. So and it gives me 133 production orders with 430 production order routing lines. And then I can look at them in the VAPS. So now um, we are opening the simulation in a visual way so that we can see at the schedule and then take action there um, accordingly. And here we go. So now the simulation is open. And for those of you who are familiar with the VAPS, um, you might recognize some things here on the first glance that are, let me collapse this, um, uh, on the first glance that might seem a little bit weird to you. So we have a lot of grayed out uh, operations here. And grayed out operations can happen uh, with two reasons. So grayed out operations can happen when you have an operation that you have fully posted and posted as finished. So this and then they are not only grayed out, but they have the gray underscore. So this operation here um, has capacity ledger um, uh, associated with it, and it has been posted as complete. It's complete, so it's grayed out, black underscore. If the production order is finished, then it vanishes from the VAPS. But we also see some operations here and here. They are grayed out, but they don't have this underscore. And if we look at them, so let me double click on this one. And if we go to the uh, capacity ledger entries, there are no capacity ledger entries. So they are, and if we look at the routing lines, all the status is planned. So there is no reason that they are grayed out. But if I want to try to move them, I can't. So if I hover with the mouse over this, I get this mouse cursor and I can move it uh, up and down, left and right, whatever. I escape this now and let it where it is, but this mouse cursor is not with this operation. So this is actually weird. And if you're very familiar with the VAPS, then this happens if a data filter is applied. But when I created the simulation, I didn't apply a data filter. Now let's look at this production order. And if I look at this closely, I see, okay, actually, and let me let me follow this here, there is a routing. And the routing is, it's a, a sequential routing in six routing steps. I'm, um, I'm, I'm turning, I'm sawing, I'm gear cutting, I'm milling, I'm assembling, and then I do quality control. So pretty straightforward. So now if I look at the selected production order, I see a link here from that first operation from, from, from turning to sawing. And then if I look further, I see also a link coming here from, from milling to assembly, but something here is missing in between. And this is one of those ugly data inconsistencies that can happen. And in the past, we have been looking for the, uh, for the root cause of these kind of things for quite some while. And now with the Netronic VAPS road center, we can identify many root causes of these data issues very quickly. So let me, in my settings, change my role from manufacturing manager to Netronic VAPS. And actually this role is really meant to help in the implementation phase of the VAPS and to make data sanity checks. Right now, 
the only function is data sanity checks. So if I look at this, then I see a lot of tiles and one is red. So first of all, this Netronic Road Center gives me some information about, let's say, the size of the schedule. It shows me how many plant structures we have, how many firm plant, how many release. I tell me how many work center groups there are, work centers. So this is all good for us if we implement Business Central to quickly understand your data pattern. It also shows me some information about the EMAT, the earliest material availability date. So it tells me how many items are excluded from the calculation, how many items are included. I see I have two simulations open. Um, none of them is invalid. None of them is outdated. So, so it tells me a lot about my business central master data. And it tells me a lot about VAPS related data. And then I have data sanity checks. So we faced crashes because we had customers who had production owners without a due date. I tried to replicate this manually and I couldn't. So whatever you do manually in Business Central, I was not able to take away a due date from a production order. But we have customers who manage this. So either by some other extensions that then write in the due date of the production orders or um, by, by manipulating the database and not working from the, uh, from the front end, but from the back end. And then if you have production orders without a due date and we expect the due date, boom, uh, problems in the VAPS. Or we had customers where uh, the production orders um, on the production order routing line, we had an ending date passed or we had an ending date uh, 31st of December uh, 9999 also creating issues with the VAPS, or we had some other cases. And some of these cases really need to annoying, uh, some of the cases that, that we, you would not expect from standard business central data, but that you somehow can create database, they lead to really unwanted effects in the VAPS. And so now here, actually we see there is a machine center without a work center. So when I set up my business center, I have a machine center and this machine center, I just did not add it to work center. So now I can click here and this gives me the list of machine centers without work center. So my machine center 50, my LC 500 machine has no work center. This is something that you can do in business and it can happen. You can just set up the machine center and forget to tell to which work center this belongs. And actually, this is a gear cutting machine, I think. Or uh, uh, um, now, yeah, it's a gear cutting machine. So I put this now to the gear cutting work center. And now this Netronic VAPS road center has helped me to identify an issue in my master data that can create and that creates unwanted effects in the VAPS. So now that this is solved, let me go back to my simulations and let me create a new one so that we have new data where now my simulation knows that this, uh, this one work center that we had, that this belongs to the gear cutting machine center. And now if I view the simulation, hopefully, less great out production orders because now we have the machine center that that carries production order as part of the simulation and now no great out production orders and if i go here i think this was one of the this was one of those um i see the first step and then i see this step and then i see everything here and now everything can get moved as we would expect. So the issues that I had before are solved now and they originated from me having data inconsistency with the LC500 machine center not associated to work center. So if the machine center definition has no work center, we do not know where to put it, so we don't load it. And then this can create these effects. And if you have these effects, then you can find them from the non-Netronic VAPS road center. So actually, this is this is the first step of this road center. And you can imagine 
We have a zillion of ideas what we can do um, in addition with this role center. So this this can be can uh, can become pretty exciting. And I already know that with some of the VIPS implementations we have done, we would have been faster together if we would have had this road center nine months ago, because then we would have found some data inconsistencies faster. So that's the one thing we did on the VIPS. The other one is that we can move multiple operations or one operations um, via dialogue. So, and this is actually an interesting thing. So let's let's start with this production order. You see this production order here um, has to go to turning, it has to go sawing, and it has to go to milling. And it is currently on the standby resource, so I need to schedule it. And now let me schedule it by, I don't know, let me, let me, um, let me schedule that one first so that I get a gap filled there. Um, let me schedule this first so that I just have Less gaps. So now I schedule this one and I can say apply routing, and then it will find on the required resources the earliest available free slot. So we we find a free slot here, and then you see because my sawing, uh, once I'm finished here in turning, my sawing machine is quite busy. It it put found it here and put it here. So now let's assume that. I have an and you see it's on so in sawing and in sawing I don't have another saw. But let's assume I actually would have the option to outsource saw sawing. And I have like in my schedule very down here I have a subcontractor and this is my can do everything job shop, right? So this is a job shop to my can do everything. These guys these guys just they they can do mirrors they can do everything. So now I want to outsource this from from sawing to the subcontractor. So of course, I can drag this and drag this down. And you see while I'm dragging and dropping, now I need to wait that it scrolls, it jumps back and forth, it loses a little bit the focus. And if you have, and I escape this now, if you have a lot of, a lot of production orders, then this can actually become quite annoying. Instead, what I now can do is, and you see, I'm I'm ready here on the seventh, so maybe I will start on the eighth. I have it on the outsourcer, so I can say on right mouse click, move operation. Then then this one here is from production order ten eleven seventy nine. So if I do this on one operation, then this operation is already selected, and then I can say, okay, I just want to move this operation and now i can say okay actually i want to have this on whatever i want to have this early i want to have this on the 8th of february um at eight o'clock and i want to put it to a work center and i want to put it to my can do everything job shop and then it schedules it accordingly to this and now after it's finished on my job shop um i can say here move successor and then i can accelerate this one and what I did now with one production is also something or with one operation with something that I can do with multiple operations. So now let's say for some reason, um, I have to move this production order and this production order from week seven into week nine. So week nine starts on the 26th of February. And I have here, let me look at this. This is production order 101048. And this is production order 101059. So now I can go here and say, okay, from here, right mouse click, move operations. Um, and then I, I, uh, uh, I now I only see those one because I think after it, there are no others. Um, I could um, anyway, so now I can go here. Um, move operations and then I select this one and as I select more I select both of them and then I can move them in one go and I say okay they stay on the same machine center but instead of this I want to want to move them to a week starting 26 February at 8 stay machine center and then I can move it there likewise I can also say okay I actually had and now you see they are, they have been scheduled here Likewise, now I can bring them forward again 
um, as forward as they are not uh, constrained by predecessors or what I can say is that I say, okay, I have th this production, maybe those here. And for some reason, I want to get them back on standby. So instead of picking all of them, I could also say, okay, this is uh, production order 10, 10, 40. The next one is 10, 10, 22. The next one is 10, 10, 46. So then I can again say here, right mouse click, move operations. And then it was the 40, I think it was the 42 or 44 and 46, whatever. Then I can select them. I can say, okay, and I can say, okay, I wanna move them to standby. And then they are moved to standby again so that then I can reschedule and maybe I want to move them out of the schedule because the customer told me they need the product later or whatever. So now with this right mouse click, I have the option move operations to select multiple operations that are on the same machine center. And we only show you those that are after that on that machine center after the one from where I triggered this command. So if I say move operations, now you see a longer list. If I'm doing it from here, you only see those two. And then here in this list, I can filter, I can sort, and then I can select one or multiple, and then I can exactly determine where I should drop them again. And we will drop them in the same sequence of order they were before. So also this is like a, um, a good, feature um, as it is because it allows you to more efficiently reschedule multiple operations and exactly determine where to schedule and when. Um, and this is also like preparing work that we did for a long awaited feature that we are looking at starting in Q2 this year. And this is that we can take into account um, Set up time um, when scheduling because when you when you really want to plan with um, reducing setup times, then you always will have to move multiple operations in one go. And now you can imagine if in this list you have some criteria and some information that tell you something about setup uh, at times, then it will be quite easy to pick those production orders that you want to move together because that you then have them together. So this is. Um, this feature brings a lot of potential. With this, I want to go back to the slides because this time it was not only um, the VAPS, it was the VPS. And if you are a partner who is only interested in the VAPS or if you're a customer using the VAPS, then I highly recommend that you stay in the webinar and if you watch the recording, listen to the recording, then also continue to listen to it because the things that we did for the VPS are also relevant for VAPS customers and partners, and they complement the VAPS in a very nicely way. And so just stay with me in the call for the next couple of minutes. And afterwards, um, I will also share some news and information on pricing. And then I will also look a little bit ahead what's going to come. So even if you just jo only joined me to see what's doing in the VAPS, stay with me for a minute. Because in the VPS, we also made, like with all the products performance improvements, especially when we drag and drop stuff and we reschedule and we had, we, we saw some cases where we did measurements that we, that we increased performance by up to 30%. But the main thing that we did is with the VPS, we created actually a viewer mode. So, so far, um, when Business Central was called NAV, I, in the old days, I do not think it was good old days, but it was old days, when BC was called Dynamics NAV in the old days, um, we had a VAPS banner licenses and we had a VAPS viewer license. When we moved to Business Center, we just had the VPS. So in general, everybody could drag and drop stuff, could change the schedule. And if customers did not want that their people would change stuff, then we told them, okay, then you need to kind of manage this with good processes and good education of your people. But 
over time and, and also getting your feedback, we, we saw the cases where having a visual production schedule in a view, so not the scheduler, but the visual production schedule in a view mode where this can really make sense. And so why and how did we decide to build the viewer mode of the visual production scale of the VPS. So let's quickly remember that one of the difference between the VPS and the VAPS is that the VPS shows data directly from production orders, right? The VPS directly goes to the business center production orders, load them, shows them, you move them, drag and drop them, push save, production orders updated. With the VAPS, as I just showed you right now, we show data from a simulation table. So you copy the production orders in this table and, and then you do the scheduling. So really by design, the data that you as the production planner work with in the VAPS, they differ from the business center production order data. And only in the moment that you publish the simulation, then BC data get updated and the business center production order represent the current production schedule. Very important, also very important thing when we work with customers on introducing the VAPS is the moment in time that you start publishing the simulation. This is basically going live on the VAPS. And we, we have learned that there are use cases where I call them now non-production scheduling people want to see the schedule. So they want to see the schedule, but they should not or they do not want to change it. And the easy example is like salespeople. They want to check and understand general production backlog, right? They want to see how busy are we until when are, is production like fully booked and fully loaded. And if we have like technical salespeople who understand your product and who understand a little bit of production, then seeing your production backlog and from seeing your production backlog, they can derive conclusions for delivery time commitment. So if they see that overall you're busy until mid-March, and if they know that the, the, your standard cycle time is four weeks, then, then hopefully they will communicate to the customers, okay, you should not expect the delivery before mid of April. And this is one of the cases. The other case actually that we, that we came across quite often is shop floor workers. So we more and more got the request, like, can we put a screen on the shop floor where people can see the schedule? So big screen where people can walk by, look at the screen and see what is scheduled for today, which production order, which operation in which sequence of order. Um, and I actually have visited a lot of customers who, who take screenshots of the VPS printed and put it on paper on the shop floor. And in the process of digitizing this, they are now thinking of putting screens there and then see it showing whatever, if we are in the turning department, showing VPS filtered on turning and then showing all production orders for today and for tomorrow so that people can, can look at those. And most likely they want to see it to the shop floor workers so that they can make operational decisions if allowed. So if they look at this and see, okay, we have these three production orders uh, scheduled for today. The planner said we want should do production order one first, then production order two, then production order three. We have all material picked for all production orders and for whatever. They look at the machine, they look at the pressure of the air, they look at the temperature and they say, ah, you know, based on my experience, it would be actually better to start with, with production order two and then three and then one. And then they can make it and then post it and continue. And in order to make these operational decisions, it's always good for the people on the shop floor, not just to see what is planned next, but get a picture of what is planned for today, and maybe for tomorrow. And we built the, VA, the VPS viewer mode with all these cases in mind, but we really, when we built this, we had to focus on the shop floor because the sales case is the easier one, right? The sales guys, they come, they want to open the schedule, they want to assess the backlog, they want to make a conclusion, then they close the schedule and then they continue selling. Whereas with if you put out a screen in the factory um, where people look at, then this visualization like is always on. So it needs to show a fixed time period. It needs to be free filtered. And ideally it also updates automatically. And this is what we build 
with the VPS viewer mode. And this is something we should also have a quick look at. So now let's get out of the VAPS. Let's go in my settings, change my artificial work date to today so that we look at my data in more real life. Let me, sorry, get rid of the VAPS road center and become the manufacturing manager again because no data sanity checks needed. And then I have the VPS installed. And first of all, let me open the VPS as we would, as you are know, as you know it. And now it takes a bit to load the data to get it there. And it will look like it would look almost similar to the VAPS a couple of minutes ago, but we wouldn't see the standby resource because we don't have to differentiate. And so now if we are here, you see now, <laughs> I have a schedule, I have my operations, there's some information on there, so the production number, the quantity, the item number, I think there is also some information missing, but anyway, um, so we see some information on the the bars. Um, and this is, and now you see actually when I move with the mouse over it, there is no, there is no, um, mouse cursor so i cannot drag and drop this so i'm already uh and now it tries to do something let me skip this yeah uh, so uh, good demo effect ha ah, i will show this to my development people because now this is the best demo effect that can happen finding an issue while doing a demo Ah, cool. Um, here we go. So let me try again with less playing with the mouse while talking. Um, but I will make a note at 20 minutes to five. I managed as the most stupid user that you can imagine. I managed to crash the product. So I will show this video to the developers. They will be fun. Um, anyway, so now I am in the viewing mode and you see it, it makes not good sense if you're in the viewing mode to make a lot of random mouse movements here. But um, how did I how did I switch the viewing mode on? This is something that you do in the VA in the VPS setup. And there now um, we actually have on the very top we have the editing mode. By default, it is to scheduling. So let me switch uh, switch it back to scheduling. Uh, now I see the mouse cursor and now I can move things back and forth. So if you want to enable the viewing mode, and I see there is a question, let me just finish this sort. The viewing mode, I go to viewing only. And now the interesting thing is, let me go to scheduling. We also added a new, section here that says automatic screen updates. So when we are in the scheduling mode, when we're in the mode where we can change things, we can already say if we want to show the current date timeline or not, if I switch this off, then nothing here. So now I just see when we last updated the data. And even if I'm as a scheduler, this is also new. I can say show current date time and how, how frequently this is updated. So I can say define how often the current date timeline in second is updated. And then I'll say in every second, the date timeline is updated. So now you see we have this green line already here in the editing mode. And this now is updated every second. And if we scroll down there very deeply, we would also see how this is moved. So now I switch to the editing, to the viewing mode, and you see we now get additional information. So now I can say, do I want automatic reload of data. So if production orders in business center change, do I want to reload them? That makes sense, right? If you put a screen there where no person 
should go and refresh the schedule and you can say, yes, I want my screen that shows me my production orders. I want to update it automatically. And maybe for you, it's okay if you update this every 30. So this is in minutes, every 30 minutes, we would update it. Do I want to horizontally scroll this? This also makes sense because then you always have like the current time in the middle. And I say, okay, I, I actually want to in in minutes, every minute, I want to scroll it a little bit. And you can say still the interval of the current daytime. So now I'm doing this. And then we look further at the schedule. So from a from a planning point of view, it makes sense to look at a longer time frame. But actually for me, um, as a planner, and I think it didn't take the right work date. So let me go out here. Now let's check this again. So now we are on the eighth. For me as a planner, it makes sense to look at the long time frame, but, but if I would configure this for viewing purposes only, I definitely would define a shorter time frame because the people on the shop floor, they don't need to look at the next three weeks. But for them, I think it should be pretty sufficient to look at today and the day before uh, and, and the next two days. So maybe I would say, okay, time frame, I define this relative and we want to look one day back and two days out. That should be sufficient for a shop floor worker. Um, and then I can reload this. And then I could theoretically also define filters. So for example, if I would be in the turning department, I only would like, to, uh, I, I only will want to work, load the turning data. And now um, that we have it like this, um, this green line will automatically update. And if we wait a minute, you will see the screen automatically scrolling a little bit. So maybe I drink a sip of water. We try to be patient enough to wait for a minute and then you should see this thing automatically scrolling. Which means guys on the shop floor, they can see now here on CTX, they should be finishing the production are 10, 10, 40 for item seven, quantity of 50. They should finish it quite soon, right? These guys working on that production, order, they just should have started with this. So from here, you, you, they, the guys on the shop floor, they can really see what they are supposed to do and what they should do. And I think while I'm doing did this now, there was the little scroll in the background. So this really updates if I if I if I would now add productions to business central or if you would work with the VAPS, uh, publish a new simulation, it would change things here. Then every 15 minutes now the viewer mode would check if there are news and then they would upload the data so that the guys here every 15 minutes would get a new schedule and see what they are supposed to do. And I think this is also a very good thing. And now I'm I'm looking at the question. Uh, yeah, somebody sent me that that uh, I can cut the bug when uh, uh, in the post production. Um, honestly, I could do this, but I'm I have no issues of uploading the recording of the webinar to the YouTube channel with having the bug in there, because if you meet ever a software vendor who pretends that their software is error free, then Never trust them. They are lying to you. Every software has bugs. Every software has the right to have bugs. So our software has the right to have bugs. I found one in the demo. Glad that I found it and not you found it so that we can fix it before you find it again. So I will not cut this out, but I will publish it as it is because the product and the software and the enhancement is still good. Even I managed to crash it. So, but thanks for making the recommendation um, to cut it out. I prefer dealing with the truth and having it honest. With that, um, we looked at the demo and 
I told you if you are a VIPS customer or a VIPS partner, stay on the call because actually what I just showed you was on the VPS was like also good news for you guys who run the VAPS, especially if you run the VAPS in the cloud. Because now, and let's let's combine things and combine thoughts. Um, the VAPS, and just as a reminder, it's finite capacity scheduling. It turns the business center data, the business center production order data um, that were made with from business central on the assumption of infinite capacity. It turns them into an actionable schedule, right? This is the purpose of the VAPS, turn the rubbish BC production order data into an actionable schedule. And just as a side note, it not only takes into account final capacity, but also material availability. So much more than you can do with BC. But you always, you never do this directly on the BC production order, but we do this on purpose on simulation data. And when you as a production schedule are ready with your work, you publish and then the BC production orders are updated. So the VAPS, in essence, what you see visually is always the simulation data, and this is always what the scheduler should work at. The non-scheduling related people who want to see something visual, they definitely, definitely, definitely should look at the business central production orders, because in the end, the business central production orders, they are the ultimate source of truth and the single source of truth. The VAPS is only a simulation and helps you to make the single point of truth better, actionable, more reliable. So the VPS shows the production orders as they are in Business Central. The VPS is the direct mirror of the Business Central production orders. And it has the planner mode that, that we continue to have that allows drag and drop scheduling for those customers who do not need the full power of the VPS, so really lightweight product. And now with the viewer mode, it helps you to quickly understand the production schedule because it mirrors the production orders as they are in Business Central. So the VAPS, it's really the ideal tool for a planner and a scheduler because it helps you make the plan actual and maintain it against finite capacity and material constraints. With the VPS in the viewer mode, this is really an ideal companion for VAPS customers because if you build an actionable schedule from here, then now with the VPS viewer mode, you can put out screens on the shop floor where people see the result from your scheduling and what you are supposed to do. And also salespeople, don't bother them with how they should create a simulation, how they should access the simulation, how they read the simulation, how they need to make the differentiation between the standby resource and the machines. Trust me, I'm a salesperson, salespeople do not get this. They really do not get this. But if they look at the VPS, they see what's going on, they see the backlog, they can switch uh, the views from the capacity view to the histogram view, and they understand this. And this is, that really works nicely hand in hand. So there's another question. Um, okay, somebody has to leave the call. Um, uh, and he said he likes this, so that was a partner from Denmark. Um, he wants to have a follow-up meeting with me on this, so great uh, that you joined and happy to have the follow-up meeting. Um, so thanks, good feedback. So if we combine this, um, this is really good. And so the natural consequence is that with as we have it now for VAPS and VPS, we now again start to differentiate um, between planner users and viewer users. For the VAPS, we have planner users only because it makes no sense to just view on simulation data if you don't want to schedule because the simulation data, this is work in progress of the production scheduler. And if I would be a production scheduler, I do not want that salespeople or shop floor people or other people or management or whoever look at my work in progress. It is work in progress. A simulation by definition is work in progress. And if you're ready with the simulation, then you publish it. And then you want the world to see this. So with the VAPS, we leave it as a planner only. And if 
you have user that have viewing needs. If your salespeople want to look at your schedule, if your management wants to look at the schedule, if shop floor people wants to look at the schedule, if whoever wants to look at the schedule, then now the answer is get them the VPS with viewer licenses. So with the VPS, we make the differentiation between planner and viewer, and we have now the functionality, and this is really a nice hand in hand of both products because both build on what they are good at. The VPS, good at directly reflecting business central data. The VAPS, building an environment where schedule can make a powerful schedule, where schedulers can make a powerful schedule without disturbing operation. So this differentiation between planners and viewers leads to pricing changes for the VPS. So um, with the VPS starting on April 1st, we will change the VPS subscription prices to reflect it. We don't touch the uh, on-premise pricing, but we uh, will keep the uh, we will keep them. But for uh, the subscription, we will uh, differentiate between a VPS viewer license and the VPS planner license. We will also um, uh, follow the subscription price change the v with the VJS and with the VAPS. The prices remain unchanged because we changed them already in January that we switched from the generalistic model. Um, um, to having the VAPS licensing bound to the planner users. And I see there's a question, but I just want to finish that slide. And um, like there are pricing changes, there will be also licensing changes. We already have the VAPS with the planner licenses transactable from App Source. So if you're on the cloud, you can buy it from the App Source. This will not change. Um, and with April 1, when the price changes will come into effect, we will also have the VPS transactable from App Source with two options. So you can buy a planner license or you can buy a viewer license. And we will have the VJS also transactable from App Source for the time being with planner license only because for project scheduling in the past, we faced much less demand to view only than with production people where we have a lot of um, only few people scheduling and many people wanting to view. Whereas in project scheduling, typically the guys they schedule, they also want to view at it. So there is another question. Um, there is the question. So as a current VAPS user, is VPS available to me without further cost? I would say this depends. Um, so, um, this depends on the situation, but typically it is the question is no, because if you are a VAPS user, um, you have the you have the VAPS as the planner. And if you want to view, then you can buy. If you are on cloud, you can buy going forward the VPS with viewing rights. So this is the general answer is no. It is not available at further cost, especially not if you're in cloud. If you are on-prem, we need to look at your situation um, and we can talk individually about this. So last but not least, as a consequence of this, and um, I run five minutes over, sorry for that, um, too excited about the things that are happening. Um, pricing update. So the VAPS pricing, and you should be familiar with this, didn't change. We changed it beginning of the year. So we differentiate, we have pricing per planner. We have packages called single pro and premium. The single package, one planner per month, 225 euros. This is the end user price. If you pay it annually it, uh, in advance, it is less per month per planner and the minimum number of planners you need is one. We got some questions on the maximum number of operations. Um, I will not comment on them now, but we will put out a blog post that will explain this more. Then we have the pro pricing where the price per month per planner is less than here, but you need to buy a minimum of four. So you can make the math. If you need two planners, then this is the better option. Starting from three planners, this is the better option. And likewise here, price per month per planner lower, but you need to buy minimum 10 of these. And you all see this in app source. And you can also talk to our your partner or to us with this. And we will have the same for the VPS now. 
starting from Apple one, but here, same structure, but here we differentiate between prices for a planner license. Um, 99 if you only have one planner, if you have four, um, then 59 per, per planner um, and, and more if you buy up to, if you buy minimum 10. And we also have the same structure now for viewer. Um, so if you are a VAPS customer and want to add some viewers, then here you see the pricing. And again, we will, for partners, we will upload this or we have uploaded this already. I'm not 100% sure, but it will be available shortly if it is not yet on uh, um, on the partner portal. And um, yeah, and if you have any questions, you can ask me or you can ask our um, business development colleagues. So uh, you can ask Larvin if you work with Larvin. You can ask Paulina if you work with Paulina or you can ask Egon. If you're unsure who is your dedicated partner manager, just ask me. Send me an email, drop me a note on LinkedIn and I will either direct the answer or put you in contact with the right person. And so wrapping this up, and this is like the unspoken truth, and this is something that developers love and hate after the release is before the release, right? So we have done something, we are proud, feels good, and now we have to start sweating again because now that the one thing is done, the next is about to come. And as I already said, the January release that I just introduced you was something we originally had scheduled for December. Um, and as we want to do one a quarter, then we count the January release as the Q4 release. So now we have something to do until the end of March so that we can release something in March and that I can um, share with you guys before I uh, fly out for directions in North America, which is mid of April. Um, so what we are working on is with the VAPS, we will, um, we always have a couple, uh, it's, uh, typically we have a couple of bigger themes that we look at. It's enhanced business central integration. So we make, we will improve the handling of warehouse activity lines. Um, as you know, business central is quite specific there. So if you have open warehouse activity lines on a production order, you cannot change it. And with the VAPS, we currently only recognize this on the publication when we publish the simulation and we will make sure that we get the information about open various activity lines into the simulation so that already in the simulation we can tell you hey you should not move this production order because it has open various activity lines then we have three fields um, that we added to the production order to the production order line and the production order routing line that we call the earliest start date and uh, end of March, we will allow you to actually define a formula that these dates get automatically calculated. So for example, if you run a production plan for a long period of time, let's say nine months ahead, and then you have a production order that, that whatever, from a recurring sales order um, is already in your system for December this year, then the VAPS, if it would find free capacity in March, it would move it to March. This is not what we want. So we want to say, okay, we want to production scale, we want to give you tools so that you can define a formula. They say, okay, we um, always want to have the earliest start date of a production order, whatever, maximum eight weeks before the due date. And then we, by this, we will set automatically the earliest start date. And then we have a range in which we can schedule the production order. We also will give better data when the simulation is open. So right now the progress bar that we have is always in the VAPS by quantity. We'll also make it available by time, which is good for customers that have a lot size one, because then you don't track the, un the units that you produce, but you track the time that you, uh, that you uh, consume on the production order. We will uh, enhance the progress dialogue, uh, dialogues for shop flow updates and scheduling. And um, we already found um, some things where we can improve the performance and we create a simulation. With VPS and VJS, um, VJS further performance improvements, especially when switching the views and both of them will be avail uh, uh, made available, uh, transactable on app source. And this also requires some development work from us that we need to do so that we comply with everything here so that going forward customers also can buy this from app source and already uh, note to the partners we are working um, in the program that microsoft launched to also get those transactability done via csp so this is also work in progress not mentioned on this slide and with this i know that i already got some questions um 
If you have more, then you can ask them now, or you can, uh, uh, if you have something that you want to share with me later, then send me an email or connect with me on LinkedIn, um, send me a message there. Um, every email that you get will not only be read, but I will act upon them. So either I will answer directly or I will get you in contact with the right colleague from my team to help you get the information that you need to be successful. And with this, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, enjoy the rest of the day if you're in the United States or in, in, in the Americas. Enjoy the evening if you're in Europe and um, have a late beer if you're in Asia. So with this, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for being customer. See you next time um, for the webinar. Uh, looking forward to it. Bye-bye.